Welcome to Flight Insight Test Prep. We're reviewing everything you need to know and only what you need to know to pass your test. This is Private Pilot Knowledge Test Prep Chapter 1, Aerodynamics. After finishing this chapter, you'll be ready to try the practice test questions that go along with the course. We start with the very basics. Four forces act on an aircraft in flight. These are lift, weight, thrust, and drag. When the aircraft produces more lift than its weight, it will climb. When the lift produced is less than its weight, it will descend. Similarly, when the aircraft produces more thrust than its drag, it'll speed up or accelerate. And when it produces less thrust than its drag, it'll slow down. When lift equals weight and thrust equals drag, the aircraft is in straight and level unaccelerated flight. For example, a 2,000 pound aircraft producing 2,000 pounds of lift will remain at the same altitude. And an aircraft producing, say, 200 pounds of thrust and experiencing 200 pounds of drag will stay at the same speed. This is when the four forces are in equilibrium. On a cambered wing like the one seen here, air moving along the upper surface is constricted. Bernoulli's principle says that this air will travel faster and cause a lower pressure over the top of the wing. This is one of the basic ways lift is produced, as the downward deflection of air causes an upwards lifting force to be exerted on the wing. When looking at the wing from the side, we can identify a line connecting the leading edge to the trailing edge of the wing called the cord line. As the wing flies through the atmosphere, the direction of movement of air relative to the aircraft is identified as the relative wind. The angle between the cord line of the airfoil and the relative wind is known as the angle of attack. Because the angle of attack is based on the direction of the relative wind, it is not something that can be determined solely by looking at the position of the wing or the motion of the aircraft. Simply put, we can't see angle of attack. This is one of the hard things about aerodynamics is you can't see it. It's based on wind. A wing with zero angle of attack will produce some lift by deflecting air downwards, but as the wing is pitched up relative to the wind and angle of attack increases, the greater amount of air deflected downwards increases the production of lift. Higher angles of attack lead to greater amounts of lift force, but if the angle of attack is increased too much, air can no longer smoothly follow the surface of the wing, causing a stall where lift is greatly reduced. The angle of attack at which a wing stalls will remain the same regardless of the weight of the aircraft or its indicated airspeed. In flight, if the angle of attack for each wing is increased equally, both wings will continue to produce the same amount of lift. When the critical angle of attack is reached, the wings will stall, reducing lift and causing the aircraft to drop. When one wing is more stalled than the other though, it'll drop faster, causing the aircraft to rotate in the direction of that wing and the stall will develop into a spin to that side. For a spin to occur, both wings must be stalled. One wing may stall first, but in a spin, both wings will eventually stall. Flaps are a secondary control surface on the trailing edge of some aircraft. Extending flaps increases wing camber, allowing the aircraft to produce the same amount of lift at a lower angle of attack and to fly slower without stalling. Because flaps also add drag, one purpose of them is to enable the pilot to make steeper approaches to a landing without increasing airspeed.